doing? Welcome to this morning's. Oh, the camera's gone a bit uh, all over there. Let's move that back a bit. Still getting used to all this new technology. There we go. You can actually see me now. Um, and it seems to be a fairly clear picture. So we are going to discuss today um, bulletproof your mindset on Tuesdays, as always, and we're going to discuss creating lasting change. Okay, so today's training is going to build on from last week. Okay, morning, Melissa, and I always do a little recap at the start of these trainings because um, they'll all kind of follow on from the other one in some sort of change, okay? But again, today is one of those ones that's absolutely epic. Um, I do have an appointment at 10 o'clock, so I might have to wind it in a little bit, but it's, it's 26 pages long at the minute, okay? So uh, there's a lot of info here, and it's a lot of life-changing content, okay? Morning, Matt. Morning, Needy. Morning, Fran. Morning, Fliss. So we discussed didn't we? How are you living your life? Okay. Are you living your life as an example? Or are you living your life as a warning? Okay. Some of you are still living your life as a warning. Matt, you've had a warning the last week. Okay. You've hit the rumble strip. Okay. And the few other lines that I mentioned to make it memorable, again, those of us are parents, we need to remember that kids do not do what they are told. They copy what they see. OK, um, and this will build more into your inputs and outputs, why some of you are willing, winning, why some of you aren't, why I fucked three people off out of the group this week, um, my decision, not theirs, um, and why some other people have also quit and why that's a good thing. OK, now, if you don't have a vision for your life, OK, how do you know where you're going? How do you know what to do each day when you get up? Okay, how do you know where to go? You simply, simply don't, okay? Um, and I'm gonna use Pete as an example on this um, to take the piss and he won't mind, but it's actually a real thing, this. So, we were having a bit of a laugh on, on, on Messenger the other night. It probably won't watch this anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, and we have a night out planned, okay, in Leeds on July the 9th. Uh, and I sent him a message saying how much I was looking forward to it. Um, he replied, by the way, just to give you a bit of context, Pete struggles to go more than two weekends without going out uh, since he was about nine years old, I think, going out and getting on booze. So um, we had a bit of a conversation and he said, this is why, you know, drinking little and often in in um, in most occasions is the way forward because it makes it something special. It makes it something exciting. It makes it something to look forward to, which I completely agree with. So then I sent back to him for a laugh based on that advice you've just given me. What's your record? Um, and he came back with jokingly two weeks. Um, but unjokingly, that's not a joke for most people. In fact, for some people, it's not even one day. It's not even one week. Some of you struggle to go a week without having a drink. Some of you struggle to go a day without having a drink. Some of you struggle with all three of those options, but you're still not being honest about it, okay? This comes down to your vision and mission. Pure than simple, okay? Forget about the alcohol, okay? That's just a thing, okay? That's just an input. If you had a vision, a mission, and values that you were deep down committed to achieving in terms of career, family, personal goals, hobbies, things that you were important, and your life was aligned with your values and what you value doing and what makes you happy. We're going to come on to the happiness buffet again and discuss. I'm really I feel really happy when, which is a great question for you to ask yourself. OK. I feel happy when 
When was the last time we did that? Morning, Laura. Morning, Dana. Morning, Christina. Um, but if we don't have a vision, how do we know where we're going? Okay. And as we discussed, we all want to move into an area now where we're pulled by inspiration, not pushed by motivation. So I don't want Pete to get to the level. I want to set an example for him. I want to have an impact. I want to drive forward. I want to help him with his career. I want to help him find his mission. I want to help him find a vision. And I want to find what he truly fucking values. Okay. And that will come down to him being pulled by inspiration, not it getting to the point where it's that bad again, that it's full on, as some of you will have experienced, full on depression, full on anxiety, full on down in the dumps, everything happens to me, not for me, um, and I'm going to be pushed by motivation, because if I don't make some changes, I'm going to end up dead, simple, or in rehab, okay, um, that's not meant to scare you, that's just the honest cho choice, okay, most people don't get pulled by inspiration, because they don't have a mission, values, and vision, okay, they have no mission, no values, no vision. So they just sedate every weekend. And then it gets that bad that they are then pushed by motivation. Either you have to sort your shit out or you're going to die, end up in prison or end up in rehab. Pure and simple. Okay, That's being pushed by motivation in its most extreme form. Some people it might be gaining five, six, seven stone until you can't walk up the fucking stairs without your legs chafing. Okay, Again, that's being pushed by motivation, not being pulled by inspiration. Let's try and change that, okay? So we're gonna dig deep on what is your vision today, tomorrow, this week, this month, this quarter, next year. How do you want your life to look? Guys, no, Pete, I'm not talking about you. I'm never talking about anyone on these videos. I'm talking generically about probably 95% of the British public currently, okay? What do you want your life to look like? What's your vision? Okay, because you can always change that. But most of you don't know what it is. And that's where you're going wrong. You don't know what you value. You don't know what your mission is. And that's what we're going to come on to. Okay, so the question is, what or who am I going to align myself with so that I can stay on track with my vision? Pete's done it. He signed up for VIP. He's aligned himself right next to me. And without bigging myself up too much, I'm a shining beacon for pulling him by inspiration, making sure he does what he says he's going to do and make sure he stays on plan because the level of accountability he has now as a VIP client is off the scale. OK, I will not allow him to breathe until he is moving towards his values, his mission and his vision. OK, but, you know, who's going to help keep you on track? That's, again, the questions you need to ask. But first of all, you know, grab a pen and paper while you're listening. And if you're anything like me, you should be going back over these trainings and make notes, okay? All my trainings come from Paul, because um, he's my hero. And that's why I choose to align myself with him. That's why I choose to be part of his peer group. That's why I pay him an exceptional amount of money to coach me, okay? Because I value it, because I value his coaching. But every one hour coaching that he does with me, I probably take five hours worth of notes. That's how long it takes me to watch it in his entirety, okay? Because I listen to a bit that he says, and then I get my pen out, and then I write all of my notes, okay? And then I play the next bit, and then I think about it, and then I think, how does it apply to me? How does it apply to my life? What changes can I make, okay? I'm always looking for the answers, and some of you aren't, okay? Some of you just aren't looking for the answers. And what happens when we don't look for the answers, okay? The mind will find problems every single time. If we do not look for progress, the mind will find problems. So, moving on, okay? So, to recap, really, okay? Number one, we said, and this will make sense as I come into it more, which is why I think the note's important. Today's training, I'm gonna rechange it, actually. I called it creating lasting change. And I think I'm actually going to change it to creating a mission um, that lasts. OK, so number one, perception. Now, perception is the number one factor in how we feel. And I'm going to come on to, again, a couple of personal examples 
into how I allowed my input and my perception to control myself this week and made me feel like shit. One of the examples is um, one of my uh, good friends, who's another producer at the moment, is currently in Ibiza and he's doing parties every day, um, no social distancing, um, beautiful sunshine, sat by the pool, living his best life. And it was starting to make me feel jealous, resentful and angry. OK, I've just muted him on stories. That's how you control your input, because when I'm sat in England and I can't travel and I have no gigs and I'm not able to change that currently, how is watching that ever going to make me feel good? OK, it's not. But I control that input and that's what we come into. But it's again, it's how we perceive the situation, how we perceive that other people are doing better than us. And that comes down to inputs, which is a main part of today's training, okay? The second recap was, remember, we discussed the movie, okay? All of our lives are a movie and we are all the directors. How do we want that movie to look? Do we want it to be safe, certain and fucking boring? Or do we want it to be adventurous, dangerous, risky, fun, good parts, sad parts, happy parts, have villains and be this amazing masterpiece that all comes together at the end because we were willing to play on a higher level. OK, so um, and we discussed how life is about growth and um, contribution, didn't we? Some of you aren't growing. Some of you aren't contributing. You're contributing nothing to your life or the world currently, which we'll discuss why. OK, so on a mission is the main phrase and what we're going to use. OK, I need to not talk so fast. Make my own throat sore. Um, so you almost certainly joined me, OK, because I'm on a mission and it inspired you. You watched my videos. You connected with my energy. You saw the story. You saw how I've changed. You saw what Laura and I did on television, okay? You've seen the amount of people who have had life-changing, and not just life-changing, life-saving results. And you've seen it and you've thought, this guy's on a mission. Look at his energy all the time. Look at his DJing. All the time I get messages from people saying, how do you do How do you do it all? How, 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 I don't get it. How do you do it? You just, you're just on it all the time, aren't you, okay? And you can be too. And that's what we're going to come on to, okay? But... You know, my energy, my results, my impact, that comes down to being on a mission, okay? And it comes down to the fact, and again, I've proved this time and time and time again this year, whether it's the marathons, whether it was when I was ill, whether it was when I get injured, because I fucking turn up every day. Every day I turn up despite endless setbacks, endless closed doors, Endless fucking, I don't want to listen to your music. I think your music's crap. Endless, you know, again, um, managers, agents, labels, endless setbacks. Endless setbacks with the fitness business. The fitness business has almost gone bankrupt two or three times, okay? It's been that close. Clients all leaving at once, clients coming back. You know, there are endless setbacks, but, you know, there will always be. And that's what we need to understand. And what we need to understand is about being happy, about being driven, being motivated, being able to take things forward and play at a high level. Doesn't mean you're there all the time. I have bad days. I have days when I cry. Last night, I wanted to smash the fuck out of my laptop because it was annoying me that much. There were a few people that were annoying me um, and notifications were anno annoying me. OK, listen to that. How pathetic is that? OK, I just needed to walk away and meditate for 10 minutes and come back. But don't think I don't have tough days. OK, don't think I don't struggle. Don't ever think when I do these trainings that, wow, he's just like so got his shit together and everything's easy. It's not. OK, I have to work hard at it every day, which is that we're going to what we're going to come on to. OK, but this came. Uh, I'm not very biblical, I have to admit. Um, no offense to anyone that is each to their own. Uh, it's just not something that I've ever really had an interest in or not been um no one in the family has none of my friends have so as a result of that and this is what i'm going to come on to which which some of you will realize it's not even your fault the way you are um why would i ever know anything about the bible okay 
Why would I ever know anything about religion? Religion. I've never been around anyone that's into it. I've never been taught anything about it. Um, I don't really listen in RE at school, apart from the teacher in secondary called Ferrari was quite fit. Um, but can't remember her name. But that that's the entirety of what I remember, uh, teenage hormones. But I've never been around it. So why would I know? Why would I be interested? Okay. And the phrase is, from the Bible, is those without a vision or a mission will perish okay john d martini says it as well that's where i got it from paul then said it that's where i got it from john d martini most likely got it from the bible okay this is what learning and coaching is but likewise if i'd never been around anyone that was into personal development or having a mission or being better or losing body weight or being positive or setting goals or aligning values, then I probably wouldn't have any interest in that, would I? Just like I've never had any in the Bible or not known anything about it. So if you are, and I do love this phrase, if you are living your life at a soul sucking level, because your entire life from the day you were born into it and your parents, you were just around soul sucking existence. You can't achieve this. Money will grow on trees. You'll never get anything. Ah, oh, you'll never believe in yourself. Everything's crap. Everything's shit. The world's corrupt. The government that's all wankers. You know, that is what you are going to believe because it's your inputs, which is what I'm going to come on to. Okay. If you've been around that your whole life with your teachers, your parents, your friends, your family, it's hardly surprising you feel so fucking shit and you get pissed every weekend. Because that's what you've been around your entire life and we will always be the outcome of our inputs that's why i'm not religious because i've never had any religious input okay so the first question i want to want to ask yourself and go back and definitely get a pen and write this down okay i'm gonna have to speed up because there's so many freaking pages here um am i aligned with my values okay is your mission and your vision and what you get up for on a daily basis because if you haven't got something to get up for then you won't OK, is it based around your values, your values, your values, your values? I'll say it again, your values. Or is it based around what you think you should value based on other people's inputs? OK, because if it's the latter, that's the first place where you're going wrong. But I want everyone to ask yourself that today and don't try and answer on what you think is right. OK, what do you value? If you value getting off your nut every weekend, be fucking honest about it and write that down because otherwise it's just a false exercise. OK, if you value football, the pub, pints and cocaine every weekend with the lads because you're a boy, then be honest about it. OK, this is not a task to write down your values based on what I, me, other people think they should be. OK, it's your values, your values, no one else's, not what you think you should value, what you value. OK, because would you ever have answered this again? OK, this is what most mothers do. They run around all day, every day, from the second they get up to the second they go to bed, wiping their kids asses dealing with their friends' problems, putting their husband on a pedestal, doing everything, tired, burned out, exhausted, unhappy, every day, seven days a week, because somewhere along the line, things went wrong. I'm not saying don't do some of that and don't be a good mother. And I don't, You really shouldn't be wiping your husband's ass at this age. But, you know, that comes down to... That's your daily actions, okay? But if I said, is that what you value? Is that your deep values? Is that your mission? Is that your vision, okay? I don't think you'd get the same answer. Again, guys, dads, I have this all the time. I work 70 hours. I'm the busiest man in the world. I'm busier than everyone else. But again, if I went back to ask you, value, what do you value? Oh, I value... Um, making sure I'm at work for 80 plus hours a week, telling everybody how hard I work, um, earning as much money as possible, being completely tired, exhausted, run down, lost, no hobbies, no mission, no vision, just work. Okay, would you have said that's your value? 
if I said, what do you value? And would anybody say uh, moaning, blaming, justification, justificationing, uh, living in the past, uh, blaming others, all those types of things. Would you say that? Okay. But again, if not, why do you do it so much? This is where so many of us go wrong. Okay. Including me is we constantly do things we don't value all day, every day, very often for others. And then we wonder why we're not happy. Okay. So how you live your life, and this is the main part of the training. It's on two things, three things, depending on how long I can talk for. I've got an hour and 18 minutes, hour and eight minutes. Um, how you live your life comes down to your inputs. Why I'm not religious. Why you may drink every weekend. Why you may believe you're not good enough. Because everyone in your family's always told you that. Okay. Um, and your outputs. Pure and simple. Okay, and we're going to come on to why they are so different. Okay, so your inputs will essentially become who you are. Okay, um, and it was really funny when Paul started coaching me, um, which is another part I'm going to come on to why all coaches have coaches. If a coach doesn't have a coach, do they really value coaching? Of course they don't. They're lying. Okay, if a personal trainer doesn't have a personal trainer and isn't in phenomenal shape, does he really value being in great shape and having a personal trainer? No, he doesn't. He values coaching other people and taking their money. Pure and simple. Okay. It's a big one that for me. It's a big one. Um, but they will, your inputs will essentially control who you are. Okay. And you might notice when I've completely calmed it down now, um, because it was getting a bit silly, but when um, middle of back end of last year, when I started with Paul, um, my swearing went through the roof. Now we might get three or four F bombs in a live, which is basically pretty much me in average life. Okay. If I feel like I, I need to drive a point home, I might drop an F bomb. Um, if somebody really upsets me, I might drop a C bomb, but only normally to Laura on text because most people generally find it unacceptable. Um, but when I first started coaching with Paul, I just started talking like Paul, swearing every other word, being really aggressive, you know, to the level where I'm almost surprised I didn't start talking in a Geordie accent, okay? Because I aligned myself with him. I thought it was great and my inputs were affecting my outcome, okay? It was a good thing in terms of coaching, but maybe not a good thing in terms of, of swearing, okay? Because he coaches lads, it's a very different environment. Um, but where you are, the, the input, the your inputs generally, okay, uh, think of it like a computer programmer. So your, in, your inputs is the information you are programming yourself with on a daily basis. And where you are at right now in life, fat, thin, alcoholic, sober, happy, sad, depressed, anxious, clarity, focused, wherever you sit on the spectrum, okay, is um is a result of your behavior and habits pure and simple but these are a perceived these these are a consequence of how you've perceived events that have happened okay how you've perceived action and how much quality listen how much quality information you put into your head consistently on a daily basis. Absolutely, Ange, okay? What you watch, read, and listen to, and spend time with, is what you will become. You will become your inputs, pure and simple, okay? So I've made a couple of lists here, okay? So um, inputs, okay? And I'm not just talking about books and videos and coaching and you guys listening to me, okay? I'm talking about the news, okay? I'm talking about um social media i'm talking about teachers i'm talking about family i'm talking about friends okay this one will really really make you laugh especially if you're fat and you've been called this okay um as i've been called two words two words around this actually uh big lee and little lee believe it or not little lee because i was short big lee when i was fat um input can become 
um, your input will become part of your identity. Okay. Um, so if you've ever been called Big Steve, Big Ange, um, there's a famous DJ called Big Ange. Think about that. Okay. Famous baseline DJ from Sheffield. You've been cheating and telling me lies. Did the remix of that. I can't sing. Um, but she's called Big Ange and she's really overweight. Think about what that's doing to her. Okay. Think about what that does to her identity. Will she ever lose that weight? No, I don't believe she will. Okay. Never. Okay. And likewise, if you lads, who can I use as an example? All the ladies on this morning, Mike Borisenko. If Mike was called Big Mike by his peer group because he weighed 22 stone, this peer group that he spent a big amount of time with and it was his biggest input. Um, and it's all the group of lads that take the piss. We Big Mike, get beers in Big Mike. Um, you know, is he ever going to lose that title? Is he ever going to lose weight? It's not going to happen. Pure and simple, okay? Based on his input. So remember, just try and keep that in your head for now, what our inputs are, okay? Friends, family, social, teachers, background, upbringing, okay? So what are outputs? Now, outputs are more the goals that we're looking for. So it's what you do. It's what you do with the information you've been given. Remember, none of us are perfect. We're all just doing the best we can with what we've been given on a daily basis, okay? Um, but it's what you do with the information you've been given, but also what you do with it based on how you perceive it, that's how we understand whether we make that input real or not. So um, that certain DJ, as much as I love him, I just muted him, so I won't see it today, okay? So what I've done, I've taken action, with the information I've been given, it wasn't serving me, it didn't align with my values, so I removed it for now, okay? Um, and this will come on to, um, you know, the perception is how we decide whether we make the input real or not. Does that make sense? So, um, your mate says, Big Steve, um, you'll never lose any fucking weight, Big Steve, you can't stay out of fucking pub foot one. That's my northern accent. Um, eventually, the amount of times Big Steve hears that, he will believe it, okay? But that information, it's down to how he perceives it, okay? How he perceives that situation, which is what we're going to come into. But in regards to all of this, okay, and some of you need to realise this is why you're struggling, okay? Matt Bingham, this is why you're, you've struggled the last week, okay? flat down. Um, Laura McCarthy, this is why you struggled after the weekend away, uh, the week away with family, which which shouldn't you shouldn't relate those two to each other. But it is why. Okay. Peter Sholley, this is why you struggled uh, when you went on a bender for however long you went on a bender for. Fran Hamilton, this is why you struggled when you um, started drinking wine most days again. Melissa Campbell, this is why you struggled when you started drinking again last week, most days. Um, Laura and Fliss, this is why your lives weren't playing at the level they are now when you were struggling not to drink Monday to Thursday, okay? Get your pen out and write this down. If you put shit in, you will get shit out. Pure and simple. Okay? Pure and simple. Just like that band that won that first competition. What were they called? They did a track called Pure and Simple, didn't they? Um, with Michelle off of Curry in it. Not that I ever watched Curry. Um, who remembers what they were called? Random. Anyway, shit input equals shit output. Put shit in, get shit out. Pure and simple, okay? Put shit in, feel shit. Do shit, be shit. Do nothing, be nothing, okay? It's a very, very, very honest reflection, okay? 
you. And again, those of you that have fallen off the training. And then you've started to tell me that you feel shit. Just doing my head in now. What was that first band called that won the first ever thing? Um, anyway. But if we put shit in or crap, we will always feel crap. Pure and simple. Okay. The only mistake we can make is to think that we've changed because we improved for a certain period and we won't. And then it won't hearsay. Go on, Simon. And then it goes back to that was just bugging my head out. Absolutely bugging my head out. Um, <laughs> Simon gets a clap. Um, anyway, that's what I was talking about. Um, put shit in, get shit out. Uh, the only mistake we can make is to think that it won't happen because we rectified the behavior. And this is what I'm going to come on to, what creating lasting change is. We rectified the behavior. Um, we got in great shape. We parked, put, piped the drinking down. Um, and now we think um, that we can go back to doing what we b were before. But if it's in more moderation, then the shit won't come back. Bullshit. I'm not saying don't ever have a beer. I'm not saying don't ever watch frogs playing the pianos on YouTube instead of inspirational videos. What I'm saying is, if you put shit in, you will always get shit out, okay? And we have to understand, those of you that have lowered your training, because there's lots of distraction again, um, and now your mental health is struggling, pure and simple. You feel confused, you feel frustrated, you feel overwhelmed. Laura, you're not enjoying training. Uh, it's difficult to get back to the gym. I struggled massively to get back to the gym when they reopened. I didn't go for nearly three weeks. Uh, I haven't been for a run since I've completed all the marathons, okay? Um, but we have to remember, again, write this down, mental health needs physical support. This is why we coach on fitness, nutrition, and mindset. It doesn't work. This is why I rant like a ranty man when people inquire about and just adamant they need one-to-one. -one. I have to see someone face-to-face, -face, okay? They've seen someone face-to-face -face before and it hasn't worked, but they still wanna go back. It's not enough. Mental health needs physical support. Physical health needs mental support, okay? Um, pure and simple. That's why it's fitness, nutrition, and mindset. So what we're gonna focus on is how can I change my inputs, okay? I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna work on that, Laura, with you as well. Because um, the main, if we never enjoy training, what we have to do is to link it to what we do value. Looking super shredded, okay? Delete it, delegate it, do it differently, or link it. If you can't delegate it, which might be, um, do it finding a friend. There's a few of you in Leeds who could train together. Pete, um, like I said, I probably wouldn't recommend that because his farts stink and he always does farts when he's training. Um, Kate Shandan, I think there's a few others in lead. So you could train with a friend, okay? Um, you could do it differently. You could get into mountain biking. You could get into swimming. You could get into Brazilian jiu-jitsu, okay? You could get into boxing, Laura, okay? Um, I think you'd be pretty mean at boxing, but you could do it differently, okay? You could find a way to do it differently. Um, you can delete it, which is not, not gonna work for you because you value it. So you don't want to delete something that you value. Um, but we'll come on more to that anyway. But yeah, how can I change my inputs? So again, it's the question you guys all ask, isn't it? And by inputs, most of you will think people. It's not just people, okay? Certainly not in this day and age, okay? Fresh out, I'm gonna come on to that as well, Michelle. Um, so it's the environment, okay? Inputs is the, in let me just put this light on. What goes on in this room? Um, inputs is the environment that we create okay don't think that's going to make much difference but we'll see it's a bit better okay in inputs the input the main input and this is what i'll come on to laura as well you might just need to train change your gym Okay, inputs is the environment. You might need to join some classes. The inputs is the environment, okay? It's the environment, again, listen to this really carefully. It's the environment that we create and that we put ourselves in or place ourselves in, 
okay? So let's look at your Meg. You're going to laugh. I hope Meg watches this. I don't know if Meg watches the lives, but if not, um, we're all going to be taking the piss out of Meg's messy bedroom um, behind her back. Fliss, make sure she watches it. Um, but you won't even thought of this, okay? So let's look at your physical environment. Number one, let's look at your bedroom, okay? Is it a fucking state? Is it dirty? Do you make your bed in the morning? How often do you tidy it? When did you last hoover the floor? Are your clothes all organized and clean and in your wardrobe? Or are they strewn all over the fucking floor? Okay. Dirty cups on the bedside table. Some of you will be dying right now, I hope. Um, either that or you've all got amazingly tidy bedrooms. But again, your office. What does your office look like? Is it tidy? Is it clean? Is it paperless is it organized okay um the gym you train at what's it like do you like the people do you like the music do you feel comfortable do you like the machines okay what whatsapp and facebook groups are you in okay who do you follow what company do you keep who do you spend the maximum amount of time with okay um and your phone no one will have thought of your phone being part of your environment, okay? But it massively is. It absolutely massively is. And I'm going to come on to it, okay? If your bedroom's a fucking state, that's the first thing you need to sort out. It's the first thing you see when you get up in the morning and it's the first thing you see when you go to bed. Bedroom's a state, guarantee your life will be a mess, okay? Um... Again, if your phone's a state, your life will be a mess. Covered in notifications, YouTube, TikTok, WhatsApp, Facebook, freaking group chats, tits up big baz, freaking I'll be seeing you, whatever those shitty videos are that go around every week, okay? Um, if you don't clean it up, you are gonna be constantly distractive. Clean up your homepage, okay? Do you wanna see my home, just so that I can't fake it? You want to see my homepage on my phone right now? Okay, do you want to see the next page? One, WhatsApp. Next page. WhatsApp's going to get moved onto that page today. In fact, it's not. It's going to get moved onto that page, which is where Messenger is, okay? Clean up your homepage. If you've got YouTube, Facebook, Messenger, WhatsApp, all of them on your main page, okay, you are going to get distracted and waste hours of your day looking at it, okay? And don't even think that you're not. It's like fucking saying, I'm going to go to Spearmint Rhinos and not look at the tits, okay? If you go to the lap dancing bar, you're going to look at the tits, pure and simple, I don't know what the female version of that is. Probably if you go in the shoe shop, you're going to buy the fucking shoes. Okay. Um, if they're there, flashing up all the times, notifications. It's why I got so angry last night. Because I hadn't cleaned up my environment and it was distracting me. Lost focus, lost clarity, was moving away from my values, was moving away from my vision, Vision was getting distracted, okay? Um, and this just leads us back to peer group, doesn't it? Okay? Um, and I'm going to come on to why I'm so harsh on some of you. It's because of care, okay? Um, but back to your peer group. When I joined Phil Graham's boardroom in 2019, okay, it was the 15 elite online coaches in Britain, probably. Kirk Miller, Adam James Parr, okay? Few guys in Ireland that make 50, 60 grand a week, okay? Mark Coles, Phil Lerney, um, the world's best experts on Facebook habits and all those types of things, okay? Um, I was a minnow in those 15 guys. I was the lowest person in the room. I probably earned a month what the lowest person earned in a week, okay? What do you think happened to my behavior in that group? What do you think happened to my motivation? What do you think happened to my business acumen? 
What do you think happened to everything in life? Everything went through the fucking roof because of the people that I was aligning myself with. If you go to a gym where people are better than you, fitter than you, stronger than you, if you're in this group with people that have got the results that you've seen, that you want, you're aligning yourself with the right people, okay? Try and get this freaking light to go on there. See how it's gonna work. Um, that's not gonna work. Um, let's try that. Okay, it went through the roof. Everything in my life went through the roof. Great coach, great peer group, all of them held me accountable in a room full of people once a month in Ireland, all on the same mission, all on the same values, all working hard. It was incredible, okay? You've got that here. All of you have got that here. Look at Laura's results. Look at Nick's results. Just going to use those two people. Okay. You've got the peer group. You've got the people that have done it. You've got the support. Okay. Um, and again, this is what, this is, uh, is there any, I don't think there is anyone in this group that might take it offensively or not. Okay. So I went through a period as well when, um, so I played rugby at Sheffield, which was up here. Um, and then I went back after breaking the neck. Uh, I made some bizarre dis bizarre decision and no offence to Chesterfield, but it's a much lower league. Um, and I thought, I'm going to be able to go into Chesterfield and I'll just be the fucking best, okay? I'll be the best in the team by a mile, okay? Doesn't happen, okay? I p had probably the worst two years rugby of my life. Why? Because I played at their level. People fucking smoking at rugby. People drinking, people turning up pissed to games on Saturdays, not taking it seriously, people cancelling on the morning and letting their mates down, creating bad energy, okay? And rather than being the shining star that I thought I would be by going into a little le little level, I ended up just lowering myself to the shit that was going on, okay? It was a big mistake, okay? But, you know, always remember that by putting yourself in the right environment, you're either gonna grow and involve and be on the same values, the same missions, the same billions, or you're gonna go back to the fucking place where you were before. Simple as that. Which is why I'm gonna come on to why some people have left the group in the last couple of days, why it's a good thing um, for them, me, and us, okay? But because this is the truth. This is the truth. And that's cost me a lot of money, by the way. That's cost me like 350 pounds a month in the last couple of days. And I'm cool and happy about it, which again, I will explain why. Um, but this is the truth. You either upscale your behavior or you leave. You leave the peer group, back to the J-O-B, back to the P-U-B, back to doing the same shit, same behavior that leads to the same outcomes that are destroying your life which is why you fucking came to me in the first place, okay? Pure and simple, okay? Because of the pressure. Some of them, I know downright, have left because of the text message. That text message costs us 56 quid a week, by the way. Why do I send the text message? I know some of you aren't getting it. That'll be corrected this week. Why do you think I send that message that costs me money that alerts people to what they're not doing, okay? Because I don't want people's money if they're not doing the work. How's that ever gonna make me feel good? That's why it's not upset me, okay? I'm here to have an impact. And when I understand that, I understand that the income will come. I don't want people in the group that aren't doing the work. I don't want people in the group that I'm not helping. I don't want people in the group that aren't getting results. And that's why you might think sometimes it comes across as bullying. It's another phrase that I've heard thrown around. Okay, it's not bullying, it's because I care. I want you to check in, because if you're not checking in, you're not gonna get results. If you're not checking in, it's because you've not done the work. If you've not done the work, I need to know you've not done the work so I can help you, or we can help you, okay? That's why we do it, but you know, 
find people who who want you and want the work and with the same values and that's what we're working towards and that's why i do it okay that's why you may think i'm hard sometimes but it's because i want each and every one of you to raise your standards so you can become better happier clearer have a mission have a vision and achieve your dreams okay not hide and lurk you know hide and lurk i don't want your money I want you to step up. I want you to start playing at our level, okay? Because deep down, when these leave as well, and again, I'm not gonna mention any names. Um, couple I think would have left anyway, basically, but because they were getting forced to check in. Um, oh, life's got busy, you know, life's got busy. I've got a lot, I've got a lot coming on up at work over the next three months. Um, so I'll be back, but I just need to prioritize that for now. It's like bullshit. Okay. It got tough. You don't want to do the work. You've been held accountable. So you're going to run straight back to your old behaviors, exactly where you were before. Okay. Because when we leave the peer group that holds us to a higher standard, okay, what do you think happens? What if you're in a peer group? that holds you to a higher standard, what do you think happens when you leave? Where do you think you go? Right back to where you were when you started, but worse. Lowering your standard, looking for the easiest route, avoiding discomfort, avoiding accountability, avoiding work, and going fucking nowhere. Pure and simple, going nowhere, okay? I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to be part of that. I don't want people's money who want that. That's not me, okay? I'm here to help, okay? But you have to set your environment up to win. All of us, me included, okay? Me included. You guys think I'm tough on you. You should see what I get from Paul, okay? But think about this one as well. Uh, Jessica Corton, who's one of my VIP clients, I love you more than anything in the world before I say this, but you will laugh as well. Jessica has a mass, used to have a massive problem, okay, um, with, guess what, snoozing, okay? And I thought of this, that this is the best example with setting up your environment to win, okay? So I've just got to do what I do every, every night. Eight o'clock, and I'm going back to this strictly, okay? Eight o'clock, that gets shot like that, and it goes in the kitchen, by the coffee machine, with the soothing wake up tone on, ready to get up at 5 a.m., okay? I'm not checking it after eight o'clock, I refuse to. It doesn't align with my values. It doesn't align with my mission or vision. I'm gonna be reading or doing things that helps me progress during that time, okay? Planning trainings like this for you guys. Um, but if you keep hitting snooze, this was my advice to her, move the alarm. Make it impossible to snooze. Set your environment up to win. If you keep snoozing and that's one of the things that's holding you back, why are you even giving yourself the opportunity to do it? Move the phone. Tidy the bedroom. Do the planner. Put a personal development book next to your bed. Okay? But again... Who's feeling overwhelmed, but they're not planning their day? Who's struggling with food, but they're not using my fitness pal? Who's struggling with accountability, but they're not checking in or journaling or doing anything in the group, okay? It's literally like, what is it the young kids say? W-T-A-F, okay? You're giving yourself zero chance of success. Zilchos, nothing, okay? Why are you not checking in? Why didn't you check in yesterday? If you need help with something, why didn't you post it on the Q&A last night? If you're struggling with food, why aren't you using my fitness pal? Because trust me, I can see some of them. If you're struggling with accountability, mission, vision, gratitude, appreciation, your day going to shit, overwhelm, no clarity, clar no clarity stress, but you're not doing the planner. You're just not setting yourself up, okay? Um, and again, this is an example that Paul used. And again, 
Fliss and Laura, you may associate with this. I find it really hard not to drink in the week. Well, why have you got booze in the house? Set your environment up to win. Lee, every time I drink, I end up calling my dealer and getting a bag of coke in. I just can't stop it. Delete his number. Delete all the numbers of all the people that are associated to your bad behaviours. Get the booze out of the house. Get the junk food, within reason, out of the house. Get out of the WhatsApp groups. Keep sending you porn every day. And shit that distracts you. Get it out of the house. Set your environment up to win. Delete the phone numbers. Get rid of the apps. Get rid of the tipsters. Get rid of the footy accumulators. Get rid of the shit that's not serving you. And start to align yourself with what you do value, what your mission is, and what your values and goals are. Okay, your vision. Um, but, you know, many of us are feeling overwhelmed, but we're not following the instructions. You're basically like, you get in an impossible to build Ikea flat pack, you're burning the instructions and then you're trying to figure out how to put it together. What screw goes where, okay? You're not following the instructions and that's where it's going wrong. We're not setting ourselves up to win. We're not doing these basic things. Keep booze out of the house. Delete any people out of your phone that you shouldn't have in there. Get rid of the betting apps. Okay, work out how much you actually earn and spend every week and stay within those boundaries. Figure out when I'm working, when I'm with the kids, don't cross the two over. Plan family outings, plan fun stuff. Go to the happiness buffet. Who's watched the training on the happiness buffet? Okay, but you know, again, going back to the bedroom, I, I firmly believe messy bedroom, messy office, messy life. Okay. Set your own standards, but it all comes back to mission and vision, okay? Um, if things aren't going to plan currently, um, what can we change? What can we change in our environment, okay? Home screen, apps, groups, bedroom, friends, gym, office. Dig deep today. What do I need to change? Who needs to go? Who needs to stay and who needs to go? Who do I need to align myself with to ensure success? Okay. Who do I need in my camp? Who do I need in my corner? What peer group do I want to be part of? Okay. Because I want to be in the one with these 13 elite businessmen. Okay. Or I could be with my mates who just constantly moan about not making enough money, not having any freedom and the amount of hours they work. Okay. Got to align yourself with the right people. You've got to create your environment. You've got to set your day up for success. And this comes on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, three, four, five year basis, okay? 100%, um, okay? But listen to this as well. Listen to this line. This is where so many, this is why so many of you can't create lasting change, pure and simple. Might have some more months. I think I could talk all day on this. Sorry for Bert now. We're all pals, aren't we? We really are though, aren't we? We're all here to just fucking raise each other up. Come on. Um, when your environment, still can't deal with this light. Let's talk about environments. This environment right now is getting on my tits. I don't know, I don't know how a, a thing can be Bear with me because it's doing my done. There you go. See? Change your environment. It's a bit better. I can't figure out why it's so. Bear with me. I've got an idea. I think you all need a breather anyway. That's oh, a bit better. The iPad light. <laughs> um, I hate it when it looks doomy and gloomy. That's full window there as well. Mental. Anyway, we digress. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? So when your environment, remember what we discussed, discussed what your environment is, anything from your bedroom to your home screen, 
when your environment opposes your goals, all you will ever have is willpower. And trust me, that expires fast. Okay? I'm trying to give up cocaine, but every week I hang around with people that do cocaine. I'm trying to give up drink, but I've got a house covered full of fucking booze. I'm trying to stop gambling, but I've got 17 betting apps on my phone, all sending me fucking emails every day, offering me free bets. I'm trying to stop buying shoes, but I've got 17 different ASOS accounts that keep sending me emails every day. Clean up your inbox as well, okay? When your environment opposes your goals, all you have is willpower, and willpower doesn't exist. It's like self-belief. It's like confidence. It's not like motivation, okay? It's not a thing. It's not a thing, okay? It's created, totally created, okay? When your environment opposes your goals, all you have is willpower, and that will fade. Look at how many people join this plan, get results, leave, and then come back, because they get the peer group, they get the results, they think they've nailed it, then they leave the peer group because it got too tough and I was on at them to make sure they keep doing what they said they would. They go back to their old peer group, they think they can do it with willpower, the willpower expires and they're back to square one. Big ups to everyone who's come back this week who had left, okay? Uh, or in the last few weeks, there's a few of you, aren't there? Um, but, you know, have you even been paying attention to this? Have you re are you really paying attention to your environment? Because I haven't been at times, okay? Um, and the number two thing, only seven pages left, um, is the people, okay? So not just the environment, the people. So stop hanging out with people that you have no desire to be like. Stop listening to people who you have no desire to be like. Stop listening to people that whose opinions you don't even value. That's some woman years ago. Um, oh yeah, my husband doesn't really think I should be eating that. Oh really? How many fucking master's degrees in nutrition does he have? How many lives has he changed? How good a shape is your husband? Well, it's not really, but he's, you know, it, what, exactly. Tell him to shut the fuck up because he doesn't know what he's talking about. So many of us are listening to and taking information from and having our outputs, our actions, the things that we do. What's the word? Um, What's the word when you when you easily do something? Can't think of it. Not easily, just easily influenced. Okay, we're having our actions influenced and our inputs influenced and our environments influenced by people we don't even aspire to be like. People we don't even want to be like. People who aren't even trying to achieve what we want to achieve. You know, it's like me to do. I take. Do I take business advice from the guy who turns over well in, well, well in excess of a million pounds a year? Or do I take business advice from the blagger on Facebook who's never achieved anything in your life, except from, you know, he can write a sales funnel, okay? But he's never actually made any money. Why am I gonna listen to what he thinks, okay? Am I gonna listen to, you know, people who have mixed down records that have made the top 10 or am I going to listen to someone who I don't even know who he is and he doesn't make sense, okay? You know, we have to, we have to make sure we're listening to people that align with our mission, our vision, our values and what it is we want to achieve, okay? Um, so what I would advise is audit, actually like a business, okay? Audit the people in your life. Do it today, okay? Two simple questions. Who do I know that I need to spend more time of? Because I want my life to look like theirs. I want my life to look like Paul's. He's got his shit together into the middle of next week. Everything's nailed. 
He's beaten all his demons. His business is on fire. He's constantly growing and contributing. That's why I spend a lot of time with him. Laura pushes me to be better and better and better. That's why I choose to spend more time with her. I train with a guy that's in much better shape than I am because he pushes me to be better. I go into an environment where people are better than me. I listen to business things from people who are more experienced and better than me, okay? Which comes on to the second one. Who do I need to spend more time with? Okay, remember we can't get rid of negative people. We can't get rid of negative influences, toxic people, all that shit we talk about, um, the news and all that. But be specific, you know. Who do I need to stop listening to? Who do I need to start listening to? Who do I need to unfollow? Who do I need to follow? How do I need to stop starting my day? And how do I need to start starting my day? Which groups do I need to leave? Okay. And by the way, this is a big thing that I think that we all struggle with as well. And I massively struggle with. Doesn't mean you think you're better than them. Okay. Does not mean you think you're better than them. It doesn't. And that's something we worry. Oh, I have that all the time. Oh, you think you're fucking better than us now just because you don't do sniff anymore. Well, in that case, yeah, I do actually. Um, but, oh, you know, you think you're better than us because you don't go out every weekend anymore. Or you think you're better than us because you don't come to the pub anymore. I don't think I'm better than you. I just think I've got different values, missions and goals. So I've aligned myself with people who they match. So we connect and that feels good. Your values and missing and goals are your things. But, you know, that's all it means. It doesn't mean you think you're better than them. Okay? doesn't mean you think you're better. And that's something that we've, I think, who would struggle with, who struggles that internally? Oh, I don't want to say that because they now think I'm better than them because I'm in better shape and I eat well. Doesn't doesn't mean you think you're better. It just means you value your health higher. Value your confidence higher. Value your personal appearance higher. I don't, I don't think I'm better than you because I'm in better shape. I've just got different values. Okay. Um, you know, that's why I don't go out to the pub every weekend and I'd rather work because I value my business. I value my income. I value Logan's future. I value keeping that safe. Okay. I don't value spending 70 quid on lager. £210 a week on lager every Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I don't value that. It doesn't bring anything to me. I get shit out. What did we say? Put shit in, get shit out. Um, again, social media, I just mute everything. That's why when people say to me, oh, I'm just on Facebook all the time. No, I'm not. If I'm on Facebook, I'm creating, not spectating. Okay, Everything is muted. For some reason, it wasn't working last night. That's why I got annoyed. Notifications are shut down. Groups are shut down. Okay, they're off my phone, okay? Because your input will become who you are. And at worst, if it doesn't become who you are, it will be a constant source of distraction. Like I said, my mate in Ibiza making me feel really shit about my own situation because he's just partying and DJing every night. I can't party, I can't DJ, I'm not in Ibiza. I'm in England and it's fucking raining. Um, think about your friends. How often have you got in a bad mood if you're on plan you're working towards your mission, your values and your goals and you start to see, gets to Friday night and all you can see is that everyone's out, everyone's having a good time, everyone's drinking wine, everything, everyone's drinking beers. What happens? You will want to do it. It's just human nature, isn't it? You see it, you want to do it. You don't see it, you won't. What about if you see someone who's smashing their goals into the middle of next week, they've got the body you want and you just watch them do a speech on something and then you end up going to the gym instead and feeling amazing you put a good input in you've got a good input put good shit in get good shit out put bad shit in get bad shit out okay shit in shit out remember that but you know many of us keep programming ourselves on a daily basis like i can't believe some people still watch the news and read newspapers i really can't all it is is drama conflict and argument hatred fighting that's all it is why would you want to surround yourself with that? Um, but many of you, again, keep programming ourselves, programming ourselves with shit all day, every day. And then we're wondering why we're doing shit and we're getting shit out. I wonder how many times I've said shit in this video. Um, anyway, everything you believe about where you are now, um, again, 
what you can do, what you can't do, what's achievable, what's not, how you do want to be, how you don't want to be. Again, that comes down to your beliefs and your perceptions. But these are often built, we don't just have beliefs or have perceptions, okay? They're built from those inputs. But the best thing is, is you can take charge of this, okay? You can con control it. Um, and when you can take charge of your inputs and when you can control them and you start to really control what you're putting in, that's when you'll start to live life on your terms. Okay, That's when you'll start to play with the big boys. That's when you'll start to live up here. And yeah, we're going to dip down, but you're not going to be down here. Okay, It's quieter at the top, very busy at the bottom. Okay, um, And the third thing, um, before I waffle on all day, um, which kind of builds into the inputs and outputs, okay, is our own behavior, okay? So we've, so many of us, okay, myself included, I slip back into this at least once or twice a week. We've never had access to so much positivity, so many personal development books, so many podcasts, audible, so we don't even have to read, um, free videos on YouTube like Pete and Michelle posted the other day, so we don't even have to pay for it. Um, yet we spend more time arguing about COVID or vaccines or conflicts or calling Boris a cunt or there you go, I've dropped one um, or, you know, making out everything someone else's fault or getting drawn into drama, getting drawn into negativity, um, football, tits, dicks, bets, drugs, porn, whatever it is, we get pulled back into it, even though we've got this array of array of positivity, array of audiobooks, array of um, personal development and stuff that's teaching us how to get and go where it is we want to be. And yet we still keep going back to it. OK, uh, again, very often because we're not doing the planner. We don't know what we're doing every day, each day. And then we're getting stressed because we run out of time. You know, we're not the simple first thing on the planner. Get up for a walk for half an hour every day and do 30 minutes personal development. It doesn't. It's not difficult. OK, it's not a big thing. It's the number one tip I could give anyone for setting yourself up for a perfect day. Get up, stretch, hydrate, do your planner, go and get 5000 steps in listening to some personal development. It's 45 minutes out of your day. Every single person has time to do that. OK, just get up earlier if you don't. Um, but most of you aren't doing it. OK, then you're going back to the old peer group. But, you know, I'm not saying don't go to the pub sometimes. I'm not saying don't watch football sometimes. I'm don't say, you know, occasionally we all get, I did it last weekend. We get drawn into, um, we get drawn into drama, don't we? I still do it all the time. So none of us are perfect, you know. Um, but, you know, I think a big thing as well, um, that holds some of you back as well. I think why some people have quit. Is it's almost a fear of success as well. Because becoming the new you, the successful you, the you that's playing at a higher level, the you that's got the mission, the vision and the goals, also means you need to let go of some things that you're attached to. Pure and simple, okay? Um, and it also means the more you succeed, the more criticism you're going to get. We've said that before, haven't we? Look at my career. The more, the more followers I've got, the more people hate me. But more people than the people that hate me love me. OK, if I had that fear of success, I never would have pushed myself to get that level because I was afraid of the criticism. And I think that's what some of you are still experiencing with friends and family. You're almost you're afraid to completely let go of the old you because you're afraid of success, because you know it's going to come with some form of criticism from loved ones. Sometimes sad, but fair, um, like a lady who left a few weeks ago um, back to her therapist. So they can spend a bit of time unlocking boxes and talking about fucking problems and her past and all that. And, you know, nothing that was ever going to make her move forward and that she had already tried before and it hadn't worked. But it got too tough. I put too much pressure on her. Um, I was forcing her to do the work that was going to make the change she needed in order to succeed. And when it got too tough, she's left the peer group and gone back to this exact same thing that was keeping her on the lower level to start with, which is why she came to me in the first place. OK, um, you know, it makes no sense. But again, 
it's that same situation. I think ahead was saying, what if I do actually start winning? What if I do actually give up all these habits? That will mean I have to give up cake forever. And I still kind of like cake and I'm not ready. So I'm just going to go back to the cake and the therapist and make it all about something that happened when I was three years old. Like bullshit. I'm sorry if anyone doesn't like that, but it's the truth. Okay. Um, she was afraid of finally giving up the booze, giving up the cake and actually becoming the person that she truly, truly desired to be. So when it got tough, she just went straight back to the old habits that she was doing before. because She wasn't ready to give it up. She was afraid of succeeding. OK, um, you know, what if I have nothing to moan and talk about? What if I can't moan about my weight anymore? What if I can't moan about my depression and my anxiety? What if I can't moan about how drunk I got? What if I can't moan about what happened when I was younger? Like, who do I actually become? OK, I tell you who you become. You become the person you truly want to be. But you've got to be ready to lose that identity and let it go. OK, and that just comes again straight back to your input okay through effort and work and graft okay that's all that is michelle therapists just want to talk about problems without providing solutions it makes no sense um you know i don't want to understand it i want to fix it Yes, I'm willing to talk about it, but we have to move towards an outcome. They don't move towards outcomes, in my opinion. Just keep taking money off you. Um, you know, through your behavior, let's say, um, through your behavior and output, so the things you do, go to the gym, for example, um, you can change short term. And again, this is why people leave and come back to me all the time. Okay, through graft, discipline, willpower, all or nothing, I'm on it, I'm giving it 110%, you can change. But if we don't change that input, it will always be short lived, I promise you, you'll always go back to the drugs, you'll always go back to the alcohol, you'll always go back to the binge eating, because it will only be something that you can do for so long if you don't change the input, okay. And if the input remains the same, um, but you change but you try and change the output, lasting change will never happen, okay? It will never happen. It will happen for a little bit. It's back to the willpower, okay? You can't change the output long-term and create lasting change and results without changing the input if the input is what's keeping you back, okay? The returning clients to me are the perfect example, okay? The input stayed the same, and that's why their output stayed the same because they went back to it okay so the goals that i want to leave you with today is um you know sorry the input stayed the same um and that's why the output stopped because they could only maintain it for so long without changing the input does that make sense it's almost like we can leave we can go and hard at it for eight weeks but if the all the negativity and the negative friends and the um, Debbie Downers and the people that want to keep you on their level and the people that take the drugs and the people that drink the drink and the people that go out every weekend. If that's never changing, you'll only leave for so long and then you'll just be drawn back to it. You'll leave the peer group, your standards will lower and you'll go back to where you were. We have to work on changing that input if we want the output to last. If not, the output won't last. OK. Um, Melissa, you won't because you won't allow that to happen because it's now attached to your values and your mission and you understand that that behaviour before didn't serve you. OK, um, but don't think of it as a final point. You don't just get the body you want. You have to continually work to keep it. There's no destination. Arnie did a great post about that. Um, you know, you can't buy a great physique. Um, it can only be earned with consistent work. And even when you've achieved it, you can't keep hold of it without continuing to apply that consistent work. So um, that simply won't happen. But I really do get that as well, um, Melissa. That's the the kind of fallacy of I'll be happy when, when you need to focus back on being present and just what you're doing each day and enjoying it, not where you're going to get to. OK, get rid of that destination. That's the classic kind of you know, the, the Tony Bellew, the 
Tyson Fury, became world champion, hit extreme depression. There's got to be a there's got to be a continuing thing. It's a lifestyle. It's a forever thing. Okay, um, but today, yeah, the happiness buffet. We did a coaching on this. Okay, but get clear on what you actually value. Every single person today, get a pen and paper out and get clear on what it is you actually value. Because most of you don't know. I don't think anyone's going to write Netflix or scrolling on social media, spectating other people's lives. So why do you spend so much time doing it? Drinking all weekend and feeling like utter shit for days. I don't think anyone's going to put that. So if you don't value it, why do you do it? And that's what we need to get to the bottom of, okay? Ask yourself this question. I feel happy when? I feel happy when I'm fishing. I feel happy when I'm making music. I feel happy when I'm playing with Logan, um, playing football with him in the garden. I feel happy when I'm playing rugby. I feel happy now. I feel happy when I'm coaching feel happy when I'm having an impact. I feel happy when I'm helping others. I feel happy when I'm training in the gym. I feel happy when I'm listening to loud music, really loud. I feel happy when I've got things that are planned um, and I need to, uh, I've got things to look forward to. Uh, I feel happy when I'm seeing my friends. I feel happy when I'm surrounded by positive people. Um, you know, that's what I value. So that's what I spend most of my time doing. I value learning, I value coaching. That's why I coach and that's why I have a coach, okay? I value teaching, which is why I have to learn in order to be able to teach, okay? But go back to that happiness, happiness buffet, you know? I feel happy when, when do you feel happy? Write it down, okay? Because if you don't build life around what you value, you're always gonna feel shit, okay? And that output boils down to your rituals and your habits daily, weekly, monthly and yearly. And that's why we are all are where we are. OK, because our outputs are what we do. So if it's based on what we value, then life becomes easy and fun and driven. And we have mission and focused and clarity. And, you know, as I said, it doesn't mean that you'll be happy all the time we all waver you know we'll have bad days we'll have good days um but if you don't fill your life with high value missions high value tasks and things that truly mean something to you you will be constantly distracted with low value shit people places occasions everything Okay, it's there, it's everywhere around us, trying to distract us, trying to pull us to the pub, trying to get us to buy the shoes, trying to get us to place the bet. It's everywhere around us. So if you're not making a specific effort to surround yourself with what you value, then you will always be led back to the distraction. Okay, remember the mind will always find more of what we show it. Okay, so if we don't show the mind progress, it will find problems. And that is why I'm so harsh and spend 56 quid a week sending a text message on top of the Facebook reminder you already get and the promise that you serve so signed to make sure you check in with your progress once a week. Because if we're not finding progress, we will find problems. Pure and simple. If we're not showing the mind, that's why we do the evening wins every day. If we're not showing the mind, progress it will find problems every single day it comes down to rituals it comes down to habits okay it comes down to what we value so what do i value again go back and look at the unbreakable daily checklist and planner what's on there in the morning move stretch mind personal development steps water gratitude journal get outside as you said michelle Fresh air, go to the gym, learn. What about outside of that? Rugby, music, fishing, coaching, impact over income. What do I value? But if I'm not journaling and doing the planner and being accountable and looking for progress, well, how do I know what's going on? 
How do I know if I'm succeeding? How do I know if I'm progressing? And if not, and I don't know, and I don't check in, and I don't do the progress, and I've got no idea where I'm going because I've got no habits or rituals, I don't do the journaling, I don't do the morning review, I don't do the planner, I don't do nothing, I'll go straight back to the social media, the fucking drama, all the problems, how I don't want to feel, what I don't want my life to look like, spectating, why everyone's doing better than me, guilt, resentment, over and over and over and over again, okay? The mind will always find what we show it, so we have to show it progress, okay? And we have to measure this every day. That's why we do the evening wins. That's why we plan our days. That's why we spend money on that text. Think about it, that's dead money to me, okay? And again, it just comes down to these will eventually, when you do them consistently and see the reward, everyone who's done it will back me up on this. That's when they become non-negotiable. That's why Pete's walk is non-negotiable. It sets him up for the day. But when they're based around your mission, your values and your vision, that's when you'll start to progress, okay? You don't have to do it in the apps, Michelle. A piece of paper's fine. Absolutely fine. Again, don't get bogged down on logistics. Talking of logistics, I'm gonna have to do the Q&A. Um, but yeah, progress every day. Habits, rituals, analyze it, progress. What happened each day? What did I do well? What didn't I do so well? Where do I need to improve? But if we're not showing the mind progress, if you as clients are not showing progress and doing your check-in each week, how do you even know? How do you even know if you're succeeding, okay? Um, and if you're not, because you're not doing the work, that's the point when you know you need to eat, ask for help. So either way, it's a win-win, isn't it? Um, you can't be provided with any more accountability. There's five posts a day. Okay. There's a text message. There's a weekly one meeting. It's, it can't be done anymore, but you've got to do it. We've got to start showing the mind that progress. Okay. Um, uh, leave it till next week, Michelle, now, because it's before they're submitted on Sunday before eight o'clock on Monday. Um, won't get discussed if it's submitted now. So just do it next week. Um, but yeah, you know, honestly, who has no plan for this week? Who has no plan for today? When you have no plan, you have no freedom, no time off, no drive, no discipline, no money, nothing to be disciplined to. How can you be? I wish I was more motivated and disciplined. We've not got a plan. If you've not got a plan, what is it that you want to be disciplined to? You've not got anything. That's massive, isn't it? Think about that. Oh, I'm just not very disciplined. Well, I'm not surprised. You haven't got anything to be disciplined to. Um... Guys, I've got to go straight into a live coaching call after this, which is going to be funny. I've got time for a wee and that's about it. Okay, questions and actions. Questions and actions. Mike, does it matter if I'm 500 calories short, providing I hit the protein and carb, etc. grams daily requirement? Uh, that should never, ever happen because calories, macronutrients are always exactly equal to... Um, grams of macronutrients. So there's either a dodgy setting on your MyFitnessPal, but if all your grams are correct and you're 500 calories short, then the grams can't be correct. It's physically impossible unless there's a dodgy setting. Um, but feel free to post it on tomorrow. It sounds like you may be looking at the nutrients post on the macros or calories post, not the nutrients. So uh, at the bottom of your day, click on nutrition. Um, there's three tabs at the top, calories, nutrients, macros. Make sure you're on mac on nutrients and it will tell you how much you are under on each one. That's what you need to focus on getting up. Likewise, if you're 500 calories under, everything's around about in the right region and you're not hungry, no problem at all at this stage. Cow hair, any thoughts on Google Fit versus Strava? Absolutely none, no idea, never used Google Fit. Um, so haven't got a clue, but again, um, I think you're just over obsessing over details here again. Just get out and get the calories burned. Get out and get the run done. Okay? Simple. Don't stress about the smaller things. Burn the calories and everything else will take care of itself. Get the work done. Um, don't over focus on how it's being tracked and analyzing those numbers. Just get out and do more than you did yesterday. 
Craig Johnson, been struggling with sleep, down to having an operation on my nose, also had a few personal problems at home and then been struggling with my food, been about three to 400 calories under each day, still managing two gym sessions per day and my steps, just trying to keep busy. This will affect me not much, getting my calories in, thanks, okay? And amazing, yeah, great, that's just a statement, um, just an update, but yeah, all good, buddy, uh, no problem at all. Claire O'Hanahan, where do I pass my, post my why in the accountability group, please? Um, Hi Lee, how long does it take for something to cause you to be bloated? Uh, no idea. As I was driving home from work last night, my stomach blew up and I was in agony all evening with tummy like a rock. I think it's whole grain rice that did it. Just wanted to know what to avoid. Uh, absolutely no idea. It would be different to every single person, uh, Jackie, but it sounds like you've um, analysed that yourself already. Um, 99 times out of a... I don't know. I can't really answer that question truthfully, to be honest. I would probably say maybe three to four hours. So if all of a sudden you get bloated, I would say it was due almost certainly due to the previous meal, I would say, within that window, that whatever it is has inflamed your gut. So start to keep a list, uh, which you have done. I think it was the whole grain rice, possibly. Um, take that out and try something else. Obviously, if it doesn't happen, and um, then you've analysed what it is. But things like that are just individual to every person and trial and error. Um, and I don't, I, there wouldn't, it'd be impossible to say an ex, an, a, an exact time as well. But I would say generally, it's probably um, within within three to four hours. Okay, I would be doubtful of a reaction long after that, but. It's just based on personal experience that so yeah guys have an awesome day take care see you soon uh lee would you agree on bulletproof coffee in the morning you should love it but can't drink normal jar coffee um no just have a coffee um just an old fad um cool guys i'm gone love you